right? We're talking about molecular biology and we're thinking, why was such a complicated system invented? And um, in that context, the reason this system is so complicated is that it solves a problem that life has very elegantly. The problem of every cell in your whole body needs to contain all of the information it takes to make an entire you. And that information needs to be copied a trillion times in your lifetime. And there should never be a mistake when it gets copied. And if there is a mistake, we want to minimize the impact of that mistake. This system solves that problem. And it does it in a way that, yeah, it's got a lot of complications, but at its essence, it solves the problem by putting the information into code. And the code is four letters, G, A, T, and C. Technically not four letters, technically four nucleotide bases, G, A, T, and C. And those four things are totally different from each other, at least from the enzyme's point of view. Right. Um, when I said you'd be putting together a super simple jigsaw puzzle, it wouldn't be you. It'd be an enzyme, a protein acting as an enzyme that would be putting it together. And life makes it really simple for that particular enzyme to do it. Every time it just has to look and it says, oh, there's a T on that side. I'll put an A over here. Oh, there's a C. I'll put a G. Oh, there's a G. I'll put a C. That's all it has to do. Really simple. But. The problem is that we've only got four bases, and those four bases, the reason life limits the choice to four bases is those four bases can be totally different, right? There's a big one with three hydrogen bonds and a little one with three hydrogen bonds and a big one with two hydrogen bonds and a little one into two hydrogen bonds. For us, that's like black, white, red, yellow, right? Super easy, very quick to just go black, white, red, yellow, black, white, red, yellow, right on down. But if I tried to do 20 amino acids, that would be more like black, white, red, yellow, um, gray, ecru, uh, coral, turquoise, navy blue, pink, I don't know, try and think of 20 different colors. Uh, then it gets really complicated, easier to make a mistake. Life has limited the storage form of this information to just four things to minimize mistakes. Okay. And we said that the information was in code, and we said that the reason that it's in code is um, is because it, uh, no, the reason it has to be in code is because there are only four different bases it's dealing with, but twenty amino acids, right? So decoding is translating the code, right? So this will be our DNA, and you don't have a copy of this, but I could take that DNA and I could go to a little decoding chart and I could find that this is this amino acid and this one's this amino acid and this one's this amino acid. It's not, okay? But I could do that because I know the genetic code, right? So DNA has got two jobs to do. We've been talking mostly about the first job. The first job is it needs to be able to make perfect, perfect copies of itself whenever the cell divides. Well, honestly, DNA doesn't copy itself. It has enzymes that do that, right? And um, I will be talking in my lectures about what you need to know from my quizzes. If there is additional information that your lecture instructor has told you, make sure you know that for your lecture exams, but for my lab quizzes. Um, DNA helicase is going to split the hydrogen bonds, right? So um, DNA is like the piece of mold and the piece of pottery stuck together. We're about to make copies of it. So the first thing that happens is it gets split apart. Who splits it apart? Helicase, and you can tell from its name that helicase is an enzyme. Right? So now we've got the two separate pieces. And now there are enzymes uh, called DNA polymerase. And DNA polymerase is going to go over here. This is a piece of pottery. And put clay on it so that the clay will end up making a perfect copy of this thing. Right? So here we've got 
the gold strand, and the gold strand will be used to make a perfect green strand. And you know, this enzyme, DNA polymerase, he doesn't even have to look at the green strand to make a perfect green strand because all he does is look at the gold strand and use the binding rules of complementarity. And then the green strand that he makes will be perfect. By the way, if this little guy, the DNA polymerase, if this little guy, DNA polymerase, if he does make a mistake, sorry, let's follow this one. If he does make a mistake, um, there is a guy following up behind him, I don't know, some kind of manager guy who's checking that he did everything right. And if he did something wrong, it'll be really obvious because either you'll try to put two big pieces together or one that's doing a double bond and one that's doing a triple bond. Either way, the guy who follows him is kind of proofreading his work and can fix the mistake. Okay, So for my... Uh, Quizzes, you need to know DNA polymerase. And I love the name of DNA polymerase. Why? Because it's an enzyme, it's an ase, and you know enzymes are proteins that do things, in this case, put things together. What does this enzyme do? It makes a polymer of DNA, DNA polymerase, right? What would you name the enzyme that made RNA? RNA polymerase, and you'd be right. That's what it got named, right? So DNA polymerase. Yes, there's more than one DNA polymerase, but for my lab quizzes, you won't have to know that. Also for my lab quizzes, you don't have to know the details of the leading strand, the lagging strand, or DNA primase or the RNA primer. I hope that doesn't simplify it too much more than your lecture instructor, but all right. So that is one of the jobs that DNA needs to do. It needs to be able to have perfect copies of itself made right before cell division. Cell division is mitosis. And making a perfect copy of all of your DNA is called replication. Just like in those science fiction movies where there are replicants among us, then it's just taking you and making another you. That's DNA replication. Now, the other job DNA needs to do its second job is called transcription, and transcription is not this image, okay? Let's talk about transcription. Transcription is not all of the DNA. Remember, DNA, this is, this is one base pair. DNA is millions big. When replication happens, it's the entire, all of the DNA inside of the entire cell that needs to get copied. Oh, that's a huge job. Thank goodness it only happens once in the life of a cell. That's replication, okay? Now, we are talking now about this. This is another thing that DNA is needed for the job. DNA, out of all of those millions of base pairs, it has got small segments that are called genes, okay? Those segments that are called genes, they, that is the instruction for making one protein. Okay, technically a little more complicated than that, but we won't go into it, okay? So if I say you have got a gene for brown pigment in your eyes, that means you have got a little tiny segment of one of your chromosomes that has the instructions for a protein that knows how to make brown pigment for your eyes, right? By the way, I've got blue eyes, which means my gene for that same protein has got a mutation in it. And so my protein that's supposed to make brown pigment is broken and can't do it. So blue eyes, right? So when, when just a little bit of DNA, just one gene's worth is needed, uh, it's not, we're not copying all of the DNA, we're calling it transcription, okay? So let's imagine that this little segment right, I need another color. Let's imagine this little segment right here, that little area right there, that's gonna be the gene for what eye color you have, okay? And the cell here says, oh, we're an eyeball cell and we need to make more of that brown pigment, cool. Then there will be a different enzyme, the enzyme RNA, polymerase. RNA polymerase is going to 
uh, open up just that little tiny little segment of DNA. And once it's opened that up, breaks the hydrogen bonds, it'll tuck itself in there and it will make a complement of just the instructions on just that one gene. And the form that the complement will take is going to be in the form of RNA. And for Bio120, we're going to be focusing on messenger RNA. I don't know, did you, does anyone know what Silly Putty is? I don't know if you guys still know, but Silly Putty was this um, child's toy. It was kind of like a clay. And if you took it and you put it on the newspaper and then peeled it off, it would be the reverse of whatever cartoon you were looking at in the newspaper. It just occurs to me, you guys might not even know what newspapers are. Hopefully you do. Anyway, you can think of uh, mRNA as kind of like, as if you, the RNA polymerase just went, and now you've got the complement of the instructions of one gene. And the, those instructions are messenger RNA. Now, why did we do that, okay? Your genes are made out of DNA and they're going to stay in the nucleus where they are safe. Ooh, another difference between DNA and RNA. DNA always stays in the nucleus, RNA leaves the nucleus. DNA stays in the nucleus because that's where it's safe. And it's really important because if the DNA gets damaged, the cell will die or it will turn cancers. Either way, bad for you, okay? Now, but these are the instructions for how to build a protein. However, remember ribosomes? Ribosomes are little robot machines that make proteins. So the instructions for building a protein are in here. The machines that will build the protein are out here, either in the cytoplasm or on the rough endoplasmic reticulum. That's a problem. How does life solve that problem? Well, life solves the problem by making messenger RNA. What color? Blue? I don't know. Okay, so here's your nucleus, and she has got all the instructions for making everything that would be a you. And here comes along Mr. Ribosome. And Mr. Ribosome says to the nucleus, reporting for work today, ma'am, what would you like me to do today? Now, the nucleus does not hand over all of the blueprints for building an enormous factory complex. No, this guy, she just wants this guy to install all of the paper towel dispensers. That's, that's all she wants him to do. So she doesn't hand him all of the blueprints for the entire factory complex. He, not only would he probably mess them up, he doesn't need that much. He just needs, where should I put the paper towel dispensers? So she makes a copy of that gene in the form of messenger RNA, and hands that to him. The DNA is meant to be permanent. It stays in the nucleus where it's safe. The messenger RNA is meant to be temporary. So if at the end of the day, it's all crumpled up and it's got hamburger juice on it, it doesn't matter. We'll crumple that up at the end of the day. We'll start out new the next time, all right? So that's how life sounds, solves that problem. So just to keep this absolutely straight, Replication happens when the cell makes a whole copy of DNA in preparation for cell division, whereas the next two things happen together. Transcription is making a copy of messenger RNA, and translation is what this little guy is going to do when he builds a protein. You can even think of transcription is making messenger RNA, Translation is building a protein. Transcription happens in the nucleus. Translation happens in the cytoplasm. Transcription happens because of RNA polymerase. Translation happens because of what the ribosome does. Okay. We, oh, we will start there at the beginning of the next lecture.